We want to welcome you, Westgate Church. We want to welcome everybody this morning. Come on, let's stand up to our feet and let's praise Jesus this morning. I know it's cold. What are we going to praise Jesus? Cold, hail, or winter, or weather, what weather it is, we're going to praise Jesus. Come on, let's put our hands together, everyone. What holds your heart? What stirs your soul? Whatever comes to mind. Is you keep the thoughts you think? It's not all a waste of time. Seek and you will find. Joy still comes in the morning. Hope still walks with the hurting. You're still alive. is worth repeating so lift your head and keep singing praise the Lord the years go by we wonder why we lost our way from home the father finds the child
You're still alive. Let's praise the Lord for that. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just close our eyes. Father, we thank you this morning. Father, every time we come here, we remember what you've done for us, Lord. Lord, that every word, every song that is sung this morning, let us reflect on the song and, and, and put it in our heart for the word that has been preached through the songs this morning. I ask you, Father, that burdens are going to be lifted up this morning. I pray, Lord, that infirmities are going to go in the name of Jesus. I thank you that as we come here today, everybody that sits on those seats will have an encounter with Jesus Christ, Lord. That they will go back not the same way they came in. That there will be a conviction inside of them, Lord. That there will be a seed sown this morning as we sing this song. Let us not just be the words from our mouth, Lord, but your word says, out of the overflow or the abundance of the heart, the mouth will start to speak. We'll start to sing what we believe. Not only what we believe, we'll sing it because we mean it, we know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son whosoever Believe will not perish, they shall have eternal life. Let's sing it together again, that part. For God so loved the world that he gave his own. Whosoever believes will not perish, they shall have eternal life. Sing it out. I shall hold to the cross. I shall hold. God alone, for His love has salvation. 
Jesus, we give you praise. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Come on, erupt in some praise. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You're a good God. Thank you, Jesus. You're wonderful. You're amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's great to have you with us this morning. So glad that you're here this morning. Welcome, Westgate Church Online visitors, families. Uh, can I just say before we pray, we can play a little bit in the background. I love that. Uh, can I just say, watching online, that uh, we all need to be in church. And we have a great church. From our sound people, to our congregational members, to our musicians, to our mums and our dads and our leaders. We have great people. And there is one person, one family, one couple here that would want to love you and meet you and walk with you. And you need to be in a local church. And this is one of the churches you need to be in if God calls you. So please drop in, have a visit with us. We love you. We want you to join us. It's great as your pastor to be able to stand here and have so much confidence in our church because I have confidence in how much God loves you and I have confidence in how much we're learning to love God back and love people better every day and every week. And one thing that may have challenged you this week with your love walk, I know it's challenged many Australians. We have a new uh, Prime Minister and you know, don't we? I think we do. Yes, we do. We do. Some of you, some of you look surprised. Some of you are like, did I miss something? Maybe you didn't vote yesterday. Maybe you'll get a $20 fine. I don't know. So, but if you need help with that fine, we'll all pitch in and help you with that fine, okay? Okay. So, we got a, a new Prime Minister and, you know, that's 
It's that's fine. But you want to know what? More than that, we pray for them, we bless them, we love them, we don't agree with every decision that's made. But at the end of the day, we have the best government in the world. We have the best government in the world. And I'm not talking about the Australian government, I'm talking about the Kingdom of God. And we have a governor, the Holy Spirit, and the governor is in charge of our government. And so no matter what governments of this world do, we are under the direct uh, tutelage, that's a good word, and authority of the government of the Kingdom of God through the governor, the Holy Spirit. So do not despair, do not be dismayed that we are still on track and on course. Whatever government takes rule, we are under a final authoritative government of the Kingdom of God through the governor. So that's worth uh, shouting for. Right. This is a long prayer. I'm going to read it fast. It applies to our government, our families, our neighbours, our friends. And uh, I'm going to read it fast. And I'd like to encourage you that if, if you've never used in your prayer life the Pauline, uh, the Pauline prayers, please look that up and use them as part of your prayer life. So I'm going to pray this over all of us really fast just to, for you to get a, a, an idea of what we believe as a church and how we pray for those around us. Okay, therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory in His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power, His power, His power towards us who believe, according to the working of His mighty power which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places, far above, far above all principality, power, might, dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in which to come and he put all things all things all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church he is head over our government he is head over our churches he is head over our families and our children jesus through the power of the holy spirit he is in control and we obey and we submit to him which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all father i thank you lord we come in agreement as a church community for this prayer over our friends, our family, our government, our new Prime Minister, uh, everybody in authority. We come in agreement and we pray that over them sincerely in the mighty name of Jesus and we submit to that Lord in Jesus' mighty name. And to submit, to, to submit and to cement what we just prayed, we're going to worship. And as you worship, I'd like you to use your imagination to think of our new government, to think of our new leaders, to think of your bosses and employees and, and your husbands, your wives, your family, your friends, your mums, your dads. I want you to think of them as you sing this song and, and call them back in to a relationship with the Holy Spirit, into church, loving Jesus. Let's worship today. Thank you. The Lord bless you. And keep you, make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you, and give you peace. If you wanted that, come on, let's sing it together. The Lord bless.
be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and the children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and the family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and the children and the children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you get for us this morning just in these in these times of so much change everywhere just want the Holy Spirit to say to us surrender 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 you don't have to do it all you don't have to figure it all out you don't have to have all the answers you don't have to know everything you don't have to know 10 20 30 years 
You just have to know that God has got a plan for your life. God is in control. He looks after the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. How much more will He want to clothe and look after you? Don't worry about tomorrow. Sufficient is the evil for tomorrow. Just con- just concentrate on today. Yes, have some plans for tomorrow, but surrender to God today and God will fly in and He will work it out for you. He will work it out as long as you're hungry and you surrender. You surrender and you're hungry and you're desperate and you seek the kingdom of God first and He will add everything, everything, His righteousness and He will add everything to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's great. Well, uh, they did such an amazing job with praise and worship. Uh, thank you for coming today. It was really nice to have you with us. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Who was touched by the praise and worship this morning? If you weren't touched by the praise and worship this morning, then uh, I've got a stethoscope at the vet surgery. I'd like to... I'd like to listen to your heart and see where it's at. So we want you to experience the presence of God, uh, all praise and worship. So straight off through that, uh, I'd like us to pray uh, for my dad and incorporate everybody else in this prayer. Now, uh, uh, and I use this also, sometimes when we pray for people, you don't have to know all the details. I think there's someone somewhere that knows all the details that's in control so we don't always need to tell everybody the details uh, and betray confidence and so but pray my dad's had a health scare and working through some tests and things like that and and so we, I'd love you to continue to lift him up in prayer his name is Frank uh, but also uh, incorporate if you've got a loved one that you're praying for as well this is not just exclusive to my dad this is inclusive of everybody that's going through a health battle or an emotional battle or a mental health battle father we pray we lift up frank my dad and we lift up everybody else in the name of jesus that is going through a battle mentally emotionally physically marriage children they've got a fight on their hands and they need god god is the only one that can answer that that can deliver these kinds of miracles in many situations and we thank you holy spirit that you work a creative miracle lord in all these people that are in our hearts and minds as we're praying for them right now in jesus name we pray amen amen (coughs) amen okay so before we do the offering uh, we're going to invite up a very special engaged couple. So we have Jonathan and we have, what's your name again? <laughs> we have Precious and uh, love you to come and introduce you to the church. And, and uh, can we all stand up? You know, this is a big deal, you know, uh, uh, a couple that are choosing to get married, you know. A, a marriage is a great and healthy picture of, of what God represents. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. And then we have uh, husband-to-be, wife-to-be, and the Holy Spirit working together as one as well. And so we need marriages to be strong and succeed and to go forward and uh you know i hate it when when uh marriage is like a dirty word and uh marriage is like that optional extra and people are expecting it to work the second or the third or the fourth or the tenth or maybe the 15th time if you're in hollywood you know what i mean that sort of thing so but uh i must say you have uh chosen well you've chosen uh you've 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 that's right, that's right. You've, you've chosen a, a great young man with great swag. I, I, I used to officially be jealous of glory with the way that he dresses, but, but now, now he's, he's, he's been surpassed. He's been surpassed. So if glory, you're watching, step up your game. Okay. And, uh, and of course... Precious been with us for many years. We absolutely adore and love Precious and, and seeing her grow uh, into maturity and stuff like that. And uh, the preaching today is going to deal with some healthy things to do with marriage and family and everything else. Uh, but we want to uh, speak and pray blessing over you both. So 
We get uh, people that, you know, are connected to them. Let's quickly rush out and lay hands on them and our uh, ministry team and people that are close to them. And <clears throat> even went last night. We had a great engagement party last night and it was just so wonderful, so wonderful. <clears throat> We're going to speak blessing, the favor of God, the wisdom of God. Father, we pray, Lord, for Jonathan and Precious. Father, we speak blessing. We speak the favor of God over your decision for each other. And uh, God is smiling and God is well pleased over your decision. And you both know this, but I pray that, that in the next few months and years, you'll get a real revelation of how amazing a strong godly marriage is that changes communities changes people around you that can even change governments lord and i i believe that that whatever culture you're in every culture needs a strong godly christian jesus following culture to promote the values of marriage under our, our lordship of jesus christ and the prompting of the holy spirit father we speak blessing provision favor love grace abundance lord over this marriage we bless this couple lord we bless this couple and i pray they surround themselves with wonderful counsel and father i thank you lord that uh one can lead a thousand to flight two can lead ten thousand to flight uh you know two cords are easily broken but three husband wife and god not easily broken father thank you lord thank you lord we we cover you we cover you in the mighty name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we cover you with blessing and protection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So just like a good father-in-law or father would say, uh, we've always had a good daughter, but now we've gained a, a good son. Even though you live in Sydney, you're, you're still a good son. Anything you'd like to quickly say for 30 seconds to a minute? Uh, you know, about your bride to be or about the love of God or something like that. I really love her so much. And uh, the funny thing is, I always watch you guys on YouTube every Sunday. Wow. Uh, during Corona time, she sent me the link. Oh. And the uh, I, th I think I didn't miss even one Sunday watching you. Wow. I didn't miss. Wow. So I said, yes, when I be here, I have to come to this church <laughs> and see what you, you are doing, Pastor. Oh, thank you, thank you. From what I'm watching, mm. you're a good man of God. Thank you. I believe. And uh, I think the way she's growing, I can say something. I have nothing to say, but uh, it's enough. Yes, yes. it's awesome. enough. So good. I, so good. I'm proud of her. Yes, yes. I will take care of her. Yes. yes. I will make sure the way you did for her, yes. I'm gonna do for her too. Oh, thank you. God bless her. Thank you. Good job. Your, your turn, you just, even just a, just a, just a little thing, just a little thing. This is, this is family, this is really healthy, this is healthy and this is great for our kids to see, you know, this is great for our kids to see as well. I'm very thankful to the church and to God and I thank the church and the pastor here, uh, everybody's been on my side through rain, through sun. Uh, in all seasons, <laughs> through tears, through joy, through laughing, everybody has been beside me. Thank you so much for being on my side. <laughs> Simi's doing a good job turning the mic up and down really fast. <laughs> That's great. So, hey guys, thank you. We love you so much. We're just so thankful for, for that. And and uh, you have you have truly won me over just with that but won me over and so any of you that have not watched every Sunday they are going to come to live with you in Sydney for a month and watch every every service yes um, and then we're in a good place so <laughs> hey Matoto you still videoing we love you and Mary you have done a great job with your daughter 
done a great job. We honour you as parents. We honour your parents as well. Uh, great job. And, uh, and Glory, take some more notes from dressing like next level, next level. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Jonathan and Precious. You know, if I had a wife called Precious, it, like, how could you be mean to a wife called Precious? Like, you're going to tell her off and then her name's Precious and you're like, oh man. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Okay. So, that's good. Extra pressure on the husband. Hey, if, if your wife's called Precious, then, uh, yep, yeah, yeah, you've got a job to do. Okay. So, running out of time, going to quickly read through this. Uh, and then just one quick concept, uh, concept of offering. So it's just the story of where Cain murders Abel. And so there's lots of uh, good truth about this and God breathed on this scripture. God didn't write this. God doesn't endorse murder, but he breathed on it so we could get revelation from it. It says, Now Adam and Eve knew his wife. She conceived, bore Cain, said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process time... Uh, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So Cain got angry with God. And then we see, that we see what a person is capable of when they get angry with God. And you see this in life today. When people get angry with God, it doesn't always result in murder, but it can result in other things as well. Now, Cain talked with his brother Abel, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, probably premeditated, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So, heavy scripture, but light, encouraging, offering message. This is simply what I want to say to us today. Uh, God takes our tithes and offerings very seriously because he sees the sweat and the blood and the tears that you go through every week to work hard to get that money in, to pay for school fees, to pay for bills, uh, to pay for minor things, maybe like Maccas or KFC or Netflix, things like that. But he sees how hard you work to provide for your family of the essential things. And so because of your hard work, when you sacrifice and you obey and give your tithes and offerings, God doesn't take that lightly. He doesn't take that lightly to the certain degree that Cain killed Abel over this very, very, very principle. He was angry at God and his principle for giving with his offering. And I want you to, to wrestle with the Holy Spirit in this next season and your time of giving that God takes your offering seriously. So seriously, he respects you and your life and what he wants to do in your life. And what I ask of you today is... Give your tithes and offerings according to what the Holy Spirit has asked you. Don't disrespect your own walk with God by undergiving. Don't do that. If God has asked you to give X amount, don't then go home and grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't go home and give less as a disrespect what God has asked you to do. Because God says, this is a celebration. This is a great moment. If everybody in church, if everybody in church gave their tithes and offerings, there would be so much more money to do the work of God before us. So out of respect to your own walk with God, give what the Holy Spirit... And you know what? Even if you don't, even if you don't, there is grace, there is mercy, and there are good people around you that want to have a conversation to help strengthen you to come to the place where you give your tithes and offerings according to what the Holy Spirit has asked you to do. I haven't told you what to give, 
But I want you to come to that place where we really value offerings and tithes because God values them and he values you. Father, thank you, Lord. There's many ways to give, six ways which we're proud about. We might find a seventh one day. Father, I thank you, Lord, for all the ways that we give to you. I pray, Lord, that we follow the promptings, the utterings, the unction of the voice of the Holy Spirit to give to give in line with our walk with God and what we want to achieve on this, this, this earth before we go to be in heaven with Jesus. In your precious name, amen, amen. Offering, uh, not offering time, announcement time. Thank you. Can we just honour Pastor Dawn as she comes up? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pastor Shane. Welcome to everyone. Welcome to those of you who are watching online. Welcome to Precious and Jonathan this morning. One thing I just wanted to say was when Precious first came to this church and I asked her her name and she told me it was Precious and she told me that her dad had given her this name and I thought what a wonderful dad to declare on his daughter for the rest of her life that she would be Precious. Isn't that amazing? But we're very happy to have you here. So just a few things before I tell you a few special announcements. We have lots and lots of ways that you can grow in groups and that you can serve. And those of you who haven't been able to get to church for a while, you may be able to come to a group through the week or to get involved in one of our activities. We would love to see you. I won't go through all the groups, but they're on your newsletter. I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple of things. One, the Ladies Connect, obviously, when I can get up here, I can talk about it. Our Ladies Connect has changed a little. We now meet at the church on Thursday mornings, not at my house, and we're meeting at 10 a.m. instead of 10.30 for a beautiful time of worship and just soaking in God's presence. And then we have our cup of tea and our chat and our study and everything. So we would love to have more of you join us. Um, from old to young and in between, we welcome everyone. And we also have lots of other groups through the week that you can look up. Leadership Connect, I wanted to mention, this is on a Sunday morning after church, after morning tea. You don't have to be a leader to come to this group. In fact, we want you to come and learn how to be a leader and learn about leadership and watch Craig Groeschel's wonderful teaching. So that's at about 11.30 after our morning tea on a Sunday. and Everyone is welcome. It's mentioning bonfire nights here. Now, some of you who've been in this church for a long time know that in wintertime we have bonfires at my place, which is called The Ranch. And... The sad thing this year is that I don't have any wood cut. I've got lots of wood, but none of it is cut. So to start our first bonfire sometime in June, I need some of you mighty men of God with big muscles to come and cut some wood. So let Joe know or let me know or let Pastor Shane know if you can come and help chop wood. And we'll soon announce a date for the first one in June. A couple of special announcements. Next week is, is Connect Sunday. And we love Connect Sundays, we give Heroes Awards, we have lunch together and uh, what else do we do? We have uh, our, our Bible study for the kids, although they do that twice a month now, the teenage group. So if you can bring something for that, let Ali or Elsie know and uh, we'll have lunch together. The, the one in July is going to be a Christmas in July, so we'll give you more information about that later. And then just two other important announcements. Westgate Meal Train. Kathy, can you put your hand up? This is Kathy, if you don't know her. And Kathy is a train driver. <laughs> Kathy is a train driver. She drives our meal train. And I'd like you to... I know, it's not funny. <laughs> but if you would like to help out by making meals for some of our families who are not well at the moment or need a little bit of extra help, please see Kathy and she'll organise uh, that for you. And finally, uh, for the ladies again, SWB, which is Secret Women's Business. I've never quite found out what the Secret Women's Business is, but it's only for women. So it's our conference at City Point, and it's on the 18th to the 20th, I think, without seeing this, or is it, is that right? I can't see it. <laughs> 28th, sorry, 28th to the 30th, that's it our Secret Women's Business Conference. If you'd like to go to that, you need to register soon. So please see Alyssa or Rose or Pastor Beck 
uh, to register for that. Thank you. Have a great morning. God bless you all. And Patrick is going to lead us in communion. Morning, everyone. Morning, people watching behind the camera there. Uh, I'm going to lead us uh, around the table this morning to celebrate communion. Uh, and I just wanted to touch, to start, I was talking to our youth group, uh, Legacy Youth, on Friday night, which is growing and growing and growing. And I just want to give a special mention to, to Simi for the way that our youth band is coming along. We've got half a dozen kids every week, and Simi works one-on-one -on -one with everyone on every instrument known to man, because Simi's just got mad skills. Uh, and got a whole band up and running from vocals, keys, drums, guitar, bass, everything they're running. Uh, and we're hoping to get them up here to, to lead us in some worship really, really soon. Uh, and I was mentioning to, to the youth group on Friday night, uh, talking about the Holy Spirit. And I had come across uh, in the Bible app uh, reading that mentioned the four roles that the Holy Spirit had for us uh, within us. Uh, and they were to convict to give understanding, to source joy and comfort, and to source God's divine power here on earth. Now, when we're taking communion, what we're doing is we're remembering the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. But the sacrifice was necessary to fulfill God's will, but also to fulfill the promise that a helper friend was coming to be with us forever. And that friend is the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Ray. Thank you, Pastor Shane. Um, and when we're celebrating communion, uh, I grew up in the Catholic Church and they refer to it as the Eucharist, which means to give thanks, thanksgiving. And that's because it's a time of celebration. It's a happy time where we are thankful for what God did to fulfill that promise, to allow the Holy Spirit to come and be with us all day, every day, every minute, every hour, every day. The Spirit that fills us with faith. And that's what Jesus wanted for us. So I'm going to read from Matthew today, and most people will probably know this story, but Matthew 8, uh, verses 5 to 10, and then 13. Uh, and it says, Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, a Roman soldier, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come to him and heal him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I am also a man under authority, having soldiers underneath me, and I say to this one, go, and he goes. And I say to another one, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard that, he marveled and said to those who followed him, assuredly I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And it jumps to the end of that chapter in 13 and says, Go your way, and as you have believed, so it has been done for you. And his servant was healed the same hour. It was an act of faith. And that's what Jesus wanted for us. That's what the Spirit is here to provide, that unending source of faith and God's power within us. And like I said, I'm going to get all Catholic on you for a minute because that's what I grew up for years and years and years. And when you take the communion in the Catholic Church... When you get given that sacrament, you say, Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And that's not supposed to be done out of a rite or a ritual, but out of that faith that Jesus wanted us to have all day, every day. It's a statement of faith like the soldier did all the way back in Capernaum, where he said, you don't need to come. Just say it. That's all I need. If you say the words, it's done. And that's the faith that we have when we celebrate our communion together. It's not about the ritual. It's not because we're saying that we are unworthy. Because if Jesus says we're unworthy, who are we to say that we are not? But it's about having that statement of faith. All I need is your word and I'm healed. So... I want us to take in our own time this morning our communion and I'm just going to pray for the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives as we do that. Lord God, this morning I just want you to open our hearts. Yeah. Open our hearts and make us available for the Holy Spirit to be within us, moving around us and guiding us. We ask for the mercy of the Lord and the power for his 
body and blood that we are taking now for the forgiveness for all of our sins. Lord, I ask that we walk humbly in our life like the Roman centurion did all those years ago, that we are not afraid to come and ask for help, that we are asking the Holy Spirit to be upon us, to be within us, to dwell within us, to guide us, to make sure that we are doing what you've planned for us on our walk. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, church. I hope we have an awesome Sunday. And now I'm going to invite Pastor Shane up to lead us in a wonderful message this morning. Ta. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful communion, Pat. Really, really good. Really good. It's so good to be here with you today. Uh, welcome to our series online, The Perfect Friend. Talking about the perfect friend, the Holy Spirit, the perfect friend. Today, we're going to talk about difficult conversations, difficult conversations with God and difficult conversations with each other and how we navigate that. Uh, and so I wanted to start off by asking some questions about difficult conversations. Who has had a difficult conversation this morning with someone? Anyone? Yeah, okay. No, that's cool. That's cool. Or even who's had a difficult conversation with themselves this morning? <laughs> Who has had a difficult conversation this week? Who has had a difficult conversation this month? I think we all have, all have. If you haven't raised your hand, seriously, you're in the right church. We're going to walk you through this 100%. Who is still recovering from a difficult conversation? <laughs> Ah, there we go. Well, work in progress. Who here enjoys, 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 enjoys difficult conversations? Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. Well, if I was built like some of you, I probably wouldn't mind having a, a difficult conversation a bit more often. So, but I'm not just saying you have to use your guns for everything, but sometimes to be big and muscly might sort of... Uh, help sort of mentally win over the other person. So I'm not saying you do that here. Other men do that somewhere else. Okay. So difficult conversations are quite often really bad, but quite often really, really good. And uh, difficult conversations, they stem from so many things. If we can put a 20-minute timer on that, uh, thanks, because we're running a little bit. Thank you. Difficult uh, conversations. And so, you know, why do we have difficult conversations. Why do we have them? Well, some of us are men, some of us are women, some of us are young people, some of us are teenagers, some of us are kids, some of us, are, uh, those conversations are cultural, some of those are cross-cultural, some of those are from our socioeconomic backgrounds, some of those are from trauma and different values and different beliefs from the past. And so when you keep going on why we have different conversations, there's probably a hundred to a thousand different, uh, different sort of little things that get in as to why we have difficult conversations with people. We can have difficult conversations with people based upon our emotions and our feelings and fatigue and health and emotions and all those things that we go through. Uh, and, and they can really, really set us off. And so, for example, uh, I remember when my twins were three to four years of age, I had to have a difficult conversation with them. We were on holidays and I traditionally, when I go to sleep, whether it's a, an afternoon power nap or whether it's a sleep, I take my wedding ring off and I put it on the dresser. And I did that on holidays. I woke up and two of my rings went missing. And I looked everywhere and being cute three, four-year-old twins, um, I suspected them. I suspected them. It, it couldn't be my uh, favorite Bronco supporter. Uh, but I suspected them. They sent me on a wild goose chase for the next day, looking everywhere. It's in the suitcase. It's here. It's here. It's here. 
And I, I said, Holy Spirit, where is this ring? You've got to tell me, where is this ring? And he kept saying, twins, 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 twins. Do I need to say anything else? Twins, twins, twins. And I'm like, okay, this has gone on for so long. I can't use my rebuker anymore. I got to put away the, the wooden spoon and I got to negotiate with the twins a different way. And so I sat them down and I said, you get a free pass. Today you get a free pass. I just need the truth. So they looked really sincerely after I was looking in suitcases and here, there and everywhere. I said, Daddy, we're really sorry. We wanted to wash the rings for you. So they put them in the toilet. So, like, okay, I know the truth. I can, I can not spend the next 10 days of my holidays looking for these rings. And so my, my new ring, I, I blinged it up even more. So I've had it, and I, I keep it away from my twins. So difficult conversations. I've had some difficult conversations, and uh, there's a person in particular, and I've got their permission in my family to talk about them, and uh, I was going to offer them $20 to, to share this story, but I just felt maybe me or the Holy Spirit said offer them $10, so I offered them $10, and they, they said bargain. I feel like the wrestle between Spider-Man and, and the Jameson guy, and he's always cheaping out on Spider-Man to offer for his new story. And so I've got permission, legal permission to share this story. So as with most parents in our schools today, we have to have iPads for school. And that's great. And I love iPads. I think they're amazing. They can be used for good. They can be used for evil. And then in the, in the parenting process, sometimes all good parents, we get caught out and their parent, the kids sometimes sneak the iPads away, even if they're doing the right thing. They're still spending maybe a little bit more time on it. And so um, one of my kids was on the iPad in the morning and they didn't prepare and they went to school and there was an experiment in the school and they're wearing the wrong shoes. Had they maybe not have been on the iPad, they would have planned it, they would have put the great shoes in there. So they ring me up and that was Friday and I need to get lots of stuff done and we had a standoff on the phone and it was nice. There was no threats, there was no nothing like that. It was a really nice conversation. I said, look, I'm really sorry, but... I'm not rescuing you today. I'm not rescuing you today. The answer is no, I can't do that. I'm not rescuing you today. <clears throat> and so it was a tough pill to swallow. Um, and then about two hours later, the one thing I love about my kids' school is, especially the older ones, is they've all got emails. So two hours later, I jumped on the email. I sent them an email. I love you. I love you. This is why I did this. This is why I walked through this. You know, I, I know it's hard as a young person to go through this and get a no, but I love you. And then when they came in the car, it, it, was, it was beautiful and we had a chat and we're working through it. Difficult conversations. And so uh, with the difficult conversations as Christians, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the governor. The governor, the Holy Spirit, he is the governor of our government, the kingdom of God. He is the comforter. He is the guide into all truth. And he is the, the promise, the promise. He is the promise. And so with this, and no other religion has the Holy Spirit. No other religion has the Holy Spirit. No other religion has a savior that defeated death on the cross that left and gave us the Holy Spirit to indwell in us, to give us truth and guidance and clarity for our life, for difficult conversations. So Revelation says this, Revelation 3, 20, 21. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. Jesus talking. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Now we know that the Trinity, one of the best ways to describe the Trinity is a beautiful dance between Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It's a beautiful dance. It's a beautiful waltz of going from one person to the next, to the next, to the next, back and forward and back and they all representing each other. They're all in agreement. And so we know that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And the Holy Spirit will not force himself on you. Like Jesus, knock. Can you let me in, please? 
That's why when we know if we're going to control or force or barrage on people, we know it's not the Holy Spirit. We can assert, we can guide, we can recommend, but stand at the door and knock. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's referred to like a dove. A dove. A dove. Not a turkey. Not a spatchcock. A dove. And so a dove is sensitive. And you've got to treat the dove with lots of sensitivity and care. The Holy Ghost is there to help us in difficult conversations. And he's a gentleman and he wants us to walk through that. And when you, the reason why I read out Cain and Abel in my offering scripture is to pretext the whole thing and simply say, Cain and Abel, it was the first family fight was the first family crime. Cain killed Abel in a dispute. He had a discussion with God. It went bad for Cain. He disagreed with God. And instead of Cain running around gossiping about Abel, tripping him over in the field, you know, kicking his dog, whatever, whatever he could have done, he reacted with murder. There is a, please understand, in our society today, there is a murderous spirit still around, ready to try and kill and destroy your relationships and your future and your friendships and your marriages. There's a murderous spirit. It was the first crime with the first family. And the interesting thing is this. The interesting thing is this. It took a premeditated murder to get us into all this mess after the disobedience of Adam and Eve. And it took a premeditated murder to bring us back together through Jesus on the cross. How ironical is that? That's really cool that God could use the very thing, the very thing that destroyed the first family. He used the very thing to bring us back together. Difficult conversation through, through Adam and Eve. Then we do short of time. <clears throat> you can read Acts 5, 1 to 11. The story of Ananias and Sapphira. And it's a story about how they lied to the Holy Spirit. And then Peter challenged them on this. And then they still lied about it. And then Ananias drops dead. And then Sapphira comes in not knowing that <laughs> Ananias has died. And it's like, are you serious? Like, he's lied to the Holy Spirit about how much he sold the piece of land for. He dies on the ground, and then Sapphira comes up. <laughs> so what do they do? Do they just like, oh, oh, you're dead. Okay, drag him out, <laughs> hide him in the back room, and then Sapphira <laughs> comes in. Hey, guys, what's going on? How much did you sell the piece of land for? Oh, um, I sold it for this. <laughs> Drops down dead. So... And that's just simply to say <clears throat> that you can do a lot of research and reading on that. But I'm just simply saying that in ministry, in life, wherever we go, we have difficult conversations with loved ones, with work colleagues, with friends and family. And we need the Holy Spirit to help navigate us in these difficult conversations. So let's unpack that a little bit more. The first thing I wanted to talk about, Acts 24:16. This being so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without a fence towards God and men. Men meaning mankind. Men, women, children. So the first rule of thumb for any difficult conversation is you've got to partner your conscience. Your conscience means with knowledge. To be with knowledge. Your conscience with knowledge. To be ignorant is to be without conscience. Okay? We need to use our conscience to listen to the Holy Spirit to give us a prompting or an unction like that. I went into the high school today, uh, yet yeah, this week, and uh, I took in some sushi rolls for my kids and uh, I, I gave them out to a couple of other kids. Just left them on the bench and said, if you want it, it's yours and just sort of walked away, and, uh, and a couple of girls came up and they asked for her. I said, no, it's for my twins, and so I knew I'd be there the next day, so one of the, both of the girls come to our youth group, the other girls, so I quickly raced in, 
especially bought the sushi rolls. When I went back into the school the next day, I searched them out and I gave them their sushi rolls. And Friday night, we got one girl wearing a hat. <clears throat> we look at each other and sharing this story. I said, how did you feel? And her eyes started to well up. Her eyes started to well up like someone cared about me, thought about me intentionally and went after me and blessed me. And she had read and her parents thanked me profusely. And so with conscience, so when we follow the Holy Spirit and we want to have good and difficult conversations with people, the first thing we want to do is try and build trust with people. And we build trust with people by conscience with the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your conscience. And if you feel, if you feel like, am I hearing right? You line it up with the Word of God and you seek counsel from other believers around you. I have spent 25 years, like I've said before, not in a weird way, I adopt fathers and mothers, particularly online, online. I, I, said, um, I said to Joe, you know, one of, the, one of the reasons why I love listening to T.D. Jakes, and Joe's like, why is that? And I said, it's because I'm white. Because I'm white. And I want to be taught by an African-American father. I love being taught from Asian men and women of God in the faith, of uh, New Zealanders, of Caucasians, of island men and women in the faith. I collect dads and women as well, mothers in the faith, to listen and to glean and to learn from, to check my conscience with the Word of God and the counsel that is out there, that is out there. And can I tell you that if you want to get better at having difficult conversations with people, there are some critical messages that and people that I suggest you listen to. Charles Stanley, outstanding on the Holy Spirit. Obviously, Miles Monroe, there's Benny Hinn. There's so many other guys out there from so many other denominations. I would suggest that if you want to function in a world today where you, you work in a workplace with people that aren't following Jesus, listen to the 10 commandments of working in a hostile environment by T.D. Jakes. Outstanding. You, you, I shout to it. It's just awesome. The other one is John Maxwell, the 10 Commandments of Conflict Resolution. John Maxwell, outstanding. There's so much stuff out there. As you probably, I just, I'm always doing something. I'm always doing something. So I don't sit down a lot and read a book. It kind of bores me a little bit. No offense to the author. I'm an auditory learner. I find I just get a lot more content by listening auditory. So everything I'm doing, I'm just listening, listening, listening because I need to line, I need my conscience to submit to the truth of the Holy Spirit. And if I don't do that, I'm a danger to you and everybody else around me. A man, that woman that cannot submit their conscience to the voice of the Holy Spirit, double check it with the word of God and wise counsel. We are truly dangerous people. We are offensive people. And sometimes we get it wrong. I don't get everything right. Um, so strive to have a conscience without fence towards God and men. We're building trust. We're building trust. Hebrews 13, 17 to 19 says this. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive. I'm going to say something hopefully a little bit offensive to you this morning. I pray that you find some good people to rule over you. In the biblical context, in the biblical, you need to find good godly people to rule over you. When I read books that listen more to auditory, I am coming under their rule, under the truth of God. Submission is not a dirty word. When I was getting married to my wife, I said, I don't want the word submission taken out of our vows. It's popular to do that these days. And if you've done that, no offense, it's your wedding. And I know that you still love God, but I wanted my wife to say that she submits to me. Not to be a dominant, narcissistic, overbearing ogre. She understood that the word submission means to come under the mission. 
under our mission. Not my mission, our mission. I need a wife and she needs a husband that comes under the mission of the voice of the Holy Spirit, under the mission. I, I love being ruled by people. If you have an expertise in an area over me, please rule me righteously. If we've got to do a painting job, a carpentry job, if you've got a, a, a field of expertise in your life that, that I want to glean and learn from, please rule over me in a righteous way. God is, God's my backup. He's got me. So even if the people that are ruling over me get it wrong, God's my backup. He's got me. It's going to work out. It's going to. And if you're intimidated by someone ruling over you in a righteous way, please do a lot of research on submission and talk to the Holy Spirit. You need to be accountable. If you're not accountable to good godly voices in your life, you're not going to get God's best and you won't complete his mission for your life when you die and go to be with Jesus because accountability is, is, is humility in its purest form. Hu accountability to the Holy Spirit. So be submissive. They watch out for your souls. I watch out for my wife's souls. I watch out for my son's soul. Look at you. You're so beautiful. Beautiful dress. You know... You know how I rule over this one and Marley? <laughs> in some break time, I, um, I go sit down in the vet surgery and I say, can you get your brushes? Can you get your brushes? And they'll sit there and they'll brush my hair and I'll get a head ma massage. But in return, in return, I am talking to them about spiritual things. And then they go back to their mum and say, dad and say, do you know that Uncle Shane said this and this and this? I create a moment where they're brushing my hair, but I'm giving back something beautiful. And so ruling over people doesn't have to be a bad thing. It's a godly thing. Watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy, not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Okay, here we go. Pray for us, for we are confident that we have a good conscience. We have a good conscience through partnering with the Holy Spirit, following His promptings, backing up with the Word of God, in all things desiring to live honorably. But I especially urge you to do this, that I may be restored to you sooner. <coughs> so, about to close in two minutes, I want to say this. Two kinds of difficult conversations. There's a difficult conversation that you should desire and run to every day of your life. Run to conversations, difficult ones, with safe people. Find the safest, maturest, loving, merciful, graceful people in your life and run to them, have a difficult conversation. In our marriages, hopefully a place of safety in our families and our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to be able to run up to people and have a difficult conversation. A husband has to be able to speak into his wife's life and say, look, I'm concerned about what you're doing in this area or that area. It doesn't have to be particularly bad, but it's not particularly God. It could even be really good, but it may not be really God. And then a wife speaks to her husband saying, can we have a difficult conversation? I love you. I'm there for you. I desire you. I'm for you, but I need to have a difficult conversation. And if we could all have difficult conversations with each other, and we know that you are perfectly safe, it is a beautiful thing because the relationship goes to the next level. The next level. The hard thing is when we have difficult conversations with people that aren't quite safe and they don't know the boundaries of a safe conversation and that's where we re really need the Holy Spirit. And there's usually two responses. One is we try and we have a go and then we might bring other people into it. That's okay. But then if that's exhausted... And I'll say this for shock factor as we about to close. Sometimes if you exhausted your difficult conversation with that person, just walk away and say, just kill it. Just make it die. Just make it die for a season. Maybe you need to die. And I don't mean physically. I mean die to yourself. Die to our own selfish ambitions. 
when we have difficult conversations with people, we have to realise this, that we have to check our own heart and spirit. And as a pastor and as a man and as a, as a Jesus follower, I, I don't want people to resist me or avoid me because they feel I'm unsafe. I pray, God, don't make me seen or to be an intimidating person or personality. Not to children, not to women. Some men are very intimidating to uh, women. Some women are very intimidating to men. And you see lots of intimidation. God, I pray that I'm not intimidating to the least of these, to the weakest of these, that I'm not intimidating to anyone. Because if I'm not intimidating to you, then you can come and we can have a conversation about how we can get you closer with God and the Holy Spirit. But there's so much more to this, so much more unpacking. There's difficult conversations, but sometimes the Bible says that with a person that you've exhausted all possibilities, you've just got to hand them over to the devil. The devil then destroys their flesh, and then hopefully they come back repentant and back into the plan of God before it's too late. And we need wisdom for all of that stuff, right? And that's not a gun we want to pull out of <laughs> fire straight away. But we've got to know that there's, we've, got to, we've got to discern all relationships in our pathway. So we end off on this encouraging scripture. Ephesians 2, 4 to 5. But God, I hope every day of your life you have a but God. Not but cancer, but them, but poverty but conflict no but god who is rich in mercy we want to be like our father don't we rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses we have been made alive together with christ by grace we have been saved together in the richness of his mercy so we're going to pray a salvation prayer a prayer of repentance. Thank you, Joe. A, a, parents, uh, a prayer of returning to having the mind of Christ, to a God of mercy, so we can be like our Father to distribute mercy abundantly to others, but also wisdom and not be a doormat. Because if you keep rescuing your loved ones, you might be setting them up for a really big failure that you can never rescue them from ever again. Some people rescue people so much so that that person gets into a situation that it's way too big now. Let people fail. Let people cry. Let people get a bit miserable sometimes. I'm sorry, but if that's what's going to stop them from creating such a mountain that we can't help them with, let them hurt in the little times so they don't experience a big time that they lose it all, that they lose it all. Let's pray together. Let's close our eyes. Watching online. Holy Spirit, you're here today. We feel your presence. We pray, Lord, that we've had, a, I believe, a good, healthy approach, an encouraging word about having difficult conversations uh, with God, with the Holy Spirit, with each other, with people that are really close to us, but even people that really annoy us and get us angry, even driving on the road or pushing in line at the shopping center or whatever it is, Lord, we need to learn how to navigate people, Lord, better because we love you and we love people. And the more we love God, the more we love people. If there's anybody here today that you haven't asked Jesus into your heart the first time publicly, I'd ask that you raise your hand. And secondly, if there's anybody here that, that you are, you're really grieved your relationships by not listening to the Holy Spirit, even if it's 5%, that you've grieved him or 10% or 50%, would you take ownership today of that 2%, that 5%, that 10% that you have grieved the Holy Spirit that has hurt your relationships where that should never have been the case? Is anybody here like that, that you've grieved yourself, God, or relationships that you're going to say, hey, that's me. That's me. I'm repenting because I'm getting closer to God and I'm getting closer to people that I love and people that I want to help and serve. Anybody like that today? I'll put up my hand today. I always want to get better at that. I want, even if it's 2 5%, I want to get better at my part that I've done wrong. I put up my hand today. <clears throat> 
And I encourage you to work on the littlest things that the Holy Spirit asks you to do because it matters to God. So we're praying for me. We're praying for one man at the back. And I'm going to include the rest of you because we all need this. Father, I thank you, Lord, for today. I thank you, Lord. You're an awesome God. And we say this prayer together. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins. I ask you to forgive me for grieving and ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your forgiveness. Today, I walk closer to Jesus, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, even the very little things, so I can bless my God, I can bless myself, and I can bless those around me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, church. We love you. Uh, thanks for allowing us to spend a little bit time. I know we've run late. Uh, we're going to end off with a song. If you have to go somewhere, the service is officially closed. Thank you, Westgate Church Online, for watching with us. God bless you. Handle those difficult uh, conversations with the strength and the power and the wisdom and the truth of the Holy Spirit. Love you, church. Have a